Well, unless you've been living under a rock, you would have known that the Mont Blanc 2 Denivelle Challenge was today, and it's an unbelievable race. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, we'll try and find the. Well, anyway, you'll, you'll see the stage profile in a minute, but it's obviously finishes up Mont Blanc 2, which is class. Uh, it goes up there twice. Uh, it's a very good, a very good stage, a very good uh, one day race. Anyway, so you can see the this, the uh, finishing order. Vlasov won quite convincingly in the end, um, and it's a super interesting stage to analyze and look into the details of what it takes to win one of these, you know, pretty high ranked uh, UCI one day races. Uh, so you can see some of my boys, Fabio Aru, pretty good race there. Pierre Latour looked super strong. He raced like an idiot, but was very strong. Guillermo Tano was also very strong as well, raced like an idiot. These two kept their powder dry um, until the end. Harold Tiada, I've been going on about him a lot. He's class. Uh, Quintana's still suffering from his knee injury, and Valentin Madua literally got dropped at the first kilometer, but just rode his own own uh, pace and came past pretty much everyone. Uh, so anyway, we'll go over to the power file. I messaged Blast. I said, oh, wait, do you mind lobbing it up? And literally five minutes later, he had. So cheers for that, boss. Uh, so his weight, I think, is correct. Um, actually, uh, we could change it. I, th I think it is correct based on what I've seen from other riders. Um, so it's a five-hour race. Uh, which doesn't, I think, uh, it must include 10 minutes of neutralized section. Uh, but 292 normalized for five hours is pretty solid for a 66 gear rider. Average speed not too high, but the elevation is really, really obviously very high on this. Um, so we'll, we'll go over and have a look at the, um, the stage profile. So, you know, this first bit is hard, but, you know, I mean, it's not really that hard. It's like 230 normalized for two hours. So, I mean, most people could be able to get around that. I mean, I'm pretty confident most amateurs could get around 230 normalized. Um, so, you know, this is like one of the climbs, 240 watts. It's like, it's basically just like preamble this first two hours. So it's just like burning kilojoules. So 1600 kilojoules burn in two hours. Like it shouldn't be too tiring. So the first, um, yes, yeah, so obviously the first climb, proper climb they do is up to Chalet Reynard. Um, as you can see, it's his third best time. We're, we're going to go into this um, and see his best times ever. Uh, so his best time ever uh, was actually, I, don't, I think it was um, would have been a separate day. Anyway, we'll, we'll ignore that. We'll go back to this. So first time up Chalet Reynard, 350 watts, 5.3 watts per kilo. That seemed to be in agreement with what everyone else said. So 5.3 watts per kilo for someone like him with probably a, a FTP of 6 watts per kilo is just like tempo. Like it's not, it's not easy, but it's nothing too challenging. You can see he likes to various cadence. I've seen this quite a lot. You know, he's 60 out of the saddle, 90, 90, 95. Yeah, I guess an average of 90. So, you know, he does like to spend more time in the saddle spinning at higher cadence. Um, you can see it's pretty choppy at the beginning of the power day coming in. 374 watts is clearly just jostling for position. Um, and then, yeah, you know, that's pretty chill. Again, we can see from the top of the climb down, 220 normalized so it's not actually too hard of a race in between the climbs which is not too surprising because obviously you know he's um he's gonna want to well i mean everyone's gonna want to save their energy for the final climb uh, so yeah well so yeah his fastest time ever um i think this is, i thought it was gonna be in provence that's why it's getting up anyway we'll, we'll go over to the main climb now so this is pretty much the main climb they didn't go all the way to the top of Mont Blanc 2. If we zoom in here, um, the actual finish that the tour use is like here, um, where the Telegraph Bowl is. They they did a slightly shorter finish, but nothing nothing major really in, um, in terms of the times. Uh, so you can see, uh, yeah, Blasov's fastest time was today, which is um, which is good. I didn't know if it would have been in the past. Roman Barde holds the fastest time ever, which was in the tour, I believe, in July 2016, which yeah definitely would have been the tour. This is all from Tour of Provence, um, I believe, uh, which is this year. So it's, it's odd that Vlasov, maybe he didn't, I assume he didn't upload them because he was significantly faster than Thibaut Pino. Um, so yeah, 5.6 watts per kilo for 53 minutes is, is pretty impressive, to be honest. Uh, I'm not going to lie. That is pretty solid, no matter when it's done. Um, obviously, four hours, 3,000 kilojoules. That's quite a lot of kilojoules burned, to be fair. So kilojoule is roughly a calorie because of like calories burnt more or less just because the conversion rate is about four it's like 4.16 and the body is like 20 percent efficient so it's you can imagine it's burnt about four thousand calories before getting to that to the bottom of the climb uh you know the beginning of volume two is not uh crazily steep it's like five percent and you can see from here that he's got a couple power dropouts but nothing nothing major um 
and then they, they start to set, settle on the climb. He's got his teammate on the front, uh, Harold Tejado, who's just, just chilling a good tempo. They also had Kudis on there um, and a couple other of these starting lads. Lopez was doing a little bit of help but got dropped pretty early on. So the first like half an hour of the climb is about 370 watts, so 5.6 watts per kilo, um, which is which is pretty solid. Uh, they had a nice tailwind, as you can see, because it's 9% going 18k an hour. You'd expect um, the VAM is 1600, so normally that VAM would be more associated with or close to 6 watts per kilo or 5.8. Um, so obviously, you know, they had a pretty nice tailwind up that climb, but we'll, we'll get towards the end part. So we got the fastest time up the, the this part of the one too. Anyway, um, I'm not sure if it. Oh yeah, no. So everyone would have been. That's like, obviously a lot of people who've done this, like Pantani, didn't upload on Strava. Um, but we can still see. So up to this point before the attack, it was um pretty chill. So he, he so if you watch the race, he attacked once. Um, really, really hard. I mean, 800 watts doesn't sound much, but that is actually quite a lot if you've just been riding for 5.6 watts per kilo. Um, and then gets a pretty good, pretty good gap um, and goes across. So 440 watts for four minutes. So you know, his lactate is definitely going up. This is well above threshold. Um, you know, if his threshold were approximately to be six watts per kilo, this would be a significant. This would be a pretty hard effort. Um, so anyway, he got across uh, to Guillaume Martin. Uh, then they did a couple sort of haymaker attacks, and then the pace really slowed down. Uh, so you can see here it's like 180 watts at one point um and then i think he realized you know it's time to go so he has a second acceleration um which you know he then hit 683 watts which after like 450 watts he had like a barely a minute rest and then went again that's super super impressive and then from then on he just rode at 6.2 watts per kilo for the last seven minutes of the race um richie port was um was chasing him and couldn't get across. Richie Ford didn't follow his initial acceleration. Um, the race will probably be up somewhere, but obviously I can't show it to you that because it'll get blocked. Um, but Richie Ford didn't follow the, uh, the first acceleration by Vlasov and was just basically riding his own time, uh, sort of time trial up the climb. And Vlasov attacked Guillaume Martin, waited a little bit, and then attacked again. And 22k an hour, 8%. Uh, at some pretty significant altitude as well, really. I mean, uh, at this point, it's 1,600 meters. That's when for most people tends to start to kick in. I assume Blasso is probably pretty good at altitude, knowing given what he's won the baby gear, I think, before. Um, so, yeah, it was a pretty impressive ride from him all round, to be honest. Um, the last bit was super impressive. Um, I mean, this last part was sort of six watts per kilo for 15 minutes. Um, as we can see here, 402 watts for the last 15 minutes of the race, which is, which again, is like, you know, it's not mental on its own. But after you such a long, sustained time of climbing, it's pretty impressive. Um, so yeah, really good performance from all, from Vlasov. Has he come from nowhere? Not really. His results have been pretty significant last year. You know, he got a lot of good results. Um, but yeah, he's really stepped up massively this year. Obviously, almost beat Bernal and um, put everyone in the bin. Quintana, I think, maybe could have beaten him if it was just his knee, but his knee was a bit dodge. Um, so alas, he did not. But you can um, see he's cleaned up on all the segments um, and the last sort of part here that Shadow Renard to the Simpson Memorial was, was when he was really, really motoring. He put 15 seconds into Richie Port there, um, which is pretty impressive. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Um, if you did, obviously lower like and subscription, um, etc, etc. All my social medias are below if you want to see what sort of training I get up to. Um, I'm all right at riding a bike as well as giving class YouTube commentary. But anyway, cheers for watching and we'll see you in the next one.